Hello, hello, how are you today? Are you ready for a little mistletoe magic? Woohoo! This is a bundle, and here are the samples. I hope you could see how pretty it is. It's kind of monochromatic, and the words kind of blend in. It's a whole lot of softness going on. So there's that one. Then this one, trying to make it just a little bit more simple. And then this one, and I don't know if you could tell, but in Versamark, I stamped the mistletoe on the background. I'll make sure when I take the pictures to get a picture where you could see it. Then, of course, the mistletoe is stamped in the background here with gold embossing powder. And then on the inside, after you start coloring these, you're like, what have I got myself into? But on the inside, it's just the, um, the berries that are colored on that one. So you notice they're all different colors, nice, elegant, regal Christmas colors. Well, soft, succulent. I don't know. It looks good. So I want to do one today in navy. Maybe I kind of like this layout. So maybe something like this in navy and gold. So on the inside, I have a little inside liner. Like this one has um, smoky slate. And that, I figure, is kind of close to the silver. Where this one done with gold, I figure um, soft suede is close to the gold color. Then, of course, this one done in silver has a smoky slate. And they're all done with vanilla. Just because we're using shimmery white, and shimmery white has a little bit of a, a vanilla warm tone to it. So I think that the vanilla paper goes better than the bright white. Okay, Mistletoe Magic is the bundle. And Quiet Meadow just for the little freckles. And then the dies. And there's all these other dies. I need to do something with those because that's a lot of fun. I mean, look at these berries. I think you can lay them right over the top. And they have little dents in them. Um, and I love the sprigs. Thinking maybe a metallic. Oh, gotta come up with something, something. Okay. So, over here, I have stuff. I want to use gold ribbon. Can't forget to use embossing buddy. And these are the colors that I want to use with the navy. is Old Olive, Mary Merlot, and Real Red. That's the plan. So for each of these other ones, for instance, this one, I used um, Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Evening Evergreen. Two different colors on the leaves and it works when you're doing the water coloring it works so different on regular um, white paper or vanilla paper versus working on the shimmery white the shimmery white has a coating and so it takes quite a bit longer for the ink to dry the water to dry for it to soak in so in some ways it's good some ways it's bad um, but just in general, just it's, it's neutral. It's good because if you put some color here at the top of the leaf, it doesn't just soak in and it's set. You have a minute or two or three or five to move that color around to make it blended. So that's great, but it takes a little bit of time to dry and you can take your heat tool and just on setting one, just kind of blow over the top of it rather than being an inch away, maybe three, four, five inches away, just to kind of warm the paper, then it will dry a little bit quicker if you don't want to wait for it. But look how nicely that blended. And who would think that Parakeet Party and Evergreen, why and how would those ever blend? But somehow it works good. And putting it on soft succulent paper, it's like that's a whole bunch of no's but it works. And all of these are interesting combinations. Yeah, I had some fun with that. So this one, um, the berries are Poppy Parade. The leaves are two colors. Those are Granny Apple Green and Garden Green. Granny Apple is very yellow, very bright, and Garden Green is more of a regal, a little bit more blue, but it works. And then, where's that other one? Here it is. This again has some unique colors on it. So the leaves are 
shaded spruce, and mossy meadow. And you could see how blue the shaded spruce is. And then the berries are cherry and merlot. At first they were just cherry. And when I put them on there, the berries, I wanted to pick up a little bit of the deeper color, the deeper hues. And so I put the merry merlot in there just to give it some depth. And I really didn't take time to blend it, but I, I kind of like it. Looks good in here. It does look a little bit pastel. I could have made this a little bit bolder and stronger in color. But you could do whatever you like, however you like. If I put more ink on it, it would have been, um, the color pigment would have been as equally, equally strong as this Blackberry Bliss paper. Okay, enough of that. So here is um, Night of Navy. I have a strip for the words. This is to do the work on, the color on. See right here how there's that little extra piece laying on top. Paper base, because we're going to be doing gold powder, soft suede um, inside matte, colors Merlot, red, and olive. Okay, here is inside. Okay, shimmery white cardstock, number 101901. But this is that coated paper. So let's start with that because it might take a minute to dry. So I will put on, I want to do this one. Oh, and you know what? I have to tell you. I did bows for each one of these, and I even colored this in with a little bit of um, balmy blue. But I just didn't like it. I like the real bow instead. So, got bows ready if you want them. So, right now, let's do one of the big mistletoe and then two of this little sprig. And that's it. There'll be a lot of extra room on here. So, that is done with Versamark. And um, if you want, you could use your embossing buddy. But because we're going to be cutting it out, and because there's so much going on, like the little freckles, if you get like some overage of your powder, it's okay. Okay, so one of the big one. And when you're stamping with this, just put some pressure. Can you tell how much pressure I'm putting on? Don't put a lot of pressure. The first time I did it, I put a lot of pressure and the ends, the stems down here, they were a bit distorted. I don't want that to happen to you. So when you're stamping with clear ink on a light color paper, you can't see it. So we have to do one step at a time. So this is going in the bowl. And I don't know if you always put a paper underneath yours. I do, because I get powder everywhere. And then I just throw that paper away. Okay, so here's the gold. Then I'll do two of the little individual sprig. Can't see, can't tell. One 
one more. So if you're doing this, do your best to um, make sure that you fully set your embossing powder because when we're working with water and then the inks, if you um, <clears throat> say you didn't heat it all the way through right over here, the water is just going to flow right through and just wash away all of your powder. <clears throat> Where if you have it heat set, this little line art will hold the water in place. It will actually bubble, bubble over if you have lots of water, which you really don't want. Um, but it will hold the water all right inside of that leaf. Okay, we're going to have more embossing to do in <clears throat> just a little bit, but let's get to coloring this. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, I think maybe I'll start out by cutting these out. They perfectly line up. And you know what? On one of the um, samples, my embossing, my die cut, it moved. So I had to do it again. So, if you can... Use your washi tape or somehow use a post-it, stick it right in place, right where you want it. No bow. It, it, this project, it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to cut these out. And two of them are colored, but don't worry. We're going to get plenty of coloring. I didn't... Didn't do anything on the inside. We'll have to color the inside too. But I want you to see how different um, the paper works when you're using shimmery white with the coating on it. And both sides are coated. Um, versus working with vanilla paper. Okay, so I did a little color chart. I pulled out all my greens and all my reds that I thought might work. And some of these are still wet. I can see that they're shiny on there. Um, I have... And you know, you would think, oh, okay, red. I know what red is. But you really don't know until you get it on your paper. So I have Sweet Sorbet, Poppy Parade, Real Red, Cherry Cobbler, Merry Merlot. And for greens, Granny Apple Green, Parakeet Party, Garden Green, Shaded Spruce, Evening Evergreen, Mossy Meadow, and Old Olive. But see how they're all different? And what, what combination would you do? What combination would you pull together? So these are both very blue. Are they too similar? But it's just, it's fun to play with the different color combinations. Um, old Olive. On this one, I did just plain Old Olive, and that's it. No combo. But on the berries, I did put Merlot and Red. Okay, so... This is a window sheet that I use over and over and over. And on here, I am going to put Real Red, Mary Merlot, and Old Olive. And if you're coloring just a little bit, you probably don't even need a drip, drip of them on there. You can just open up your reinker and use the ink right at that's right at the top. But for today, I will do just a little drip of each of them. And have a little note as to what color they are, or put them in alphabetical order. And I say that only because, as soon as I put this real red one on, if I were to ask you what color is what, it's hard to tell. Because they're so concentrated, the color is so dark. See, they just all look black, but we know they're not. Okay, so I have my little color chart. For each of them. So let's get to coloring a bit. So I'm going to use the aqua painter 
and aqua painters Ooh, this one is no water in it just find one that you like because even if you have brand new aqua painters they don't all work the same and there's different size brush tips but I try to mark mine with the black on the end if it's one of my favorites because some of them you turn it over and it's just dripping and dripping which has its purpose like if you're doing a big area that would be perfect and other ones you have to squeeze because I think it says push here or if you squeeze on the bulb you get extra water out which we'll need to do along the way but um, you don't want it just to keep dripping so just check all of your your aqua painters find one that you really like and not that you're going to use it all the time like I use these three all the time okay so you could just start anywhere how about if we start with the berries so I can pick up the color and go directly from the color right on to here because it's coated it will be no big deal um, see how there's some heavy spots on here that's because that's where I set it down and I didn't do the watercolor wash this is what it looks like if you do the watercolor wash the ink just flows over the whole area of the shimmery paper and I like that look a little bit better so I'm just gonna lightly put a swish of water on there <clears throat> and I'm gonna start with the Merlot so when you have the color right here and you go directly onto there it's going to be heavy but you can control how heavy the color is so I'm going to take the color pull it out a little bit see now I can control it you could really tell that it's Merlot but see how that's like a medium it's not pink but it's not that dark so now when I go on here I get a medium color which at this point that's what I want I'll go back and I'll make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to try to get the Merlot to be down at the bottom of the berry. Okay, clear this out. And then I'm going to try to pick up a little bit of red. So it's kind of like a highlight. You notice I didn't wash that out very much. And I'll just put it right up here at the top. Okay, so you can really see the, the red. Now I might go into the Merlot, kind of full strength, and put it down here at the bottom. And when it dries, it dries softer than what you see right here. But you could definitely see that there's two different colors. Actually, it looks like three different colors because the middle is a softer bit of Merlot. And you could blend them all if you want, but just don't swoosh over the whole thing because it, then it would be... What's a combination of the words of Merlot and Red? It'd be Red red Low. We don't want Red Low. So now I'm going to go on to my next bunch of berries. I could take this and do the swoosh, but I think that the color is heavy in here. So I'm going to take some of the color out. I'm okay with it being a little bit of color. Do the watercolor wash. Or the water wash. Then I'll start with, it doesn't matter which one. This is Merlot. See how it's getting lighter and lighter. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over that cold. Well, I'm getting over the cough from the cold. Okay, so that's Merlot down there. Now, swish it out and pick up some red. because That's nice and bright for the top. And you could spend so much time making sure that everything is perfectly blended. But you don't need to. Or if you want to, you can. But you just might end up being here. Not that I was right here all day long. Playing with watercolors. Oh, pretty. Okay. A little bit of water wash. And I'm fine if it has a pink hue to it. I think one of them, I even left it just really light. It dries quick. Go to the Merlot. And it doesn't matter if you go to the Merlot first or the red first. See, that looks good just like that. But I had to stay consistent. Red.
Okay, two more berries. You should see my last paper when I was doing all three of these samples. I think I have it sitting over there. It looks like art, art was happening here. But it's just swooshing out the color, cleaning out the brush. So Tony tonight, today, it's, it, this is an evening video. That doesn't happen often. He is, it's a Saturday, he is driving the bus for everyone that's going to the covered bridge for the tree lighting ceremony. Is that fun? I probably should be there, but it's cold. It's really cold. Oh, I just went outside the line. Okay, so that is good. And if you can, wait a few minutes before you do the green because <clears throat> you don't want to pick up any of the red and have it go into the green. Let's try doing the heat tool to see if um, if I could get these berries dried. And I'll, I'll come back to that green in just a minute. Old olive. Okay, that's good. And if it isn't fully dry, you could turn it over, because I know that some of those aren't dry, and smish it. Oh, look, there's no leftover. They're just shiny from the pigment, from the ink. Um, but you want them to be dry, because if you happen to get your arm in it, hand in it, it smears, and that's not good. Okay, look at, wait just a minute. Look at this beautifulness. Guess who's having fun all day today? Yep. Lots of fun. Okay, and so the green. The green is just old olive. But I'm going to try to make different tones of it. So when you look at this little sample right over here, see how it's light at the bottom and heavier at the top? This one has a lot of light at the bottom. But just so, if it was all one color, it'd be kind of flat. So I'm going to do some water. Oh, because this is really cleaned out. I'm going to do lots of watercolor wash. And try not to hit the red, because you'll kind of reactivate the red um, berry ink. And we don't want red going in our stems. So this is a good, good point with using shimmery paper is you would say normally if that was on white or vanilla or white it would be dry but it takes a while to dry so you could just move it around a little bit more so even if you were to put like a whole lot of color right here like oh you ruined it but you could come back do some of these see how it's getting lighter and lighter pick up the color and look it's moving it didn't soak in. Coated paper. That's what shimmery white is. I'm trying to get it lighter so that the tips of the mistletoe leaves are um, light. Usually I do a little bit of homework on um, the stamp set or the animal. Remember the Yeti? I had to do homework on that. The Yeti is from the Himalayans. Sasquatch and Bigfoot is Pacific Northwest. So mistletoe, I know that it grows in trees, particularly it likes oak trees. Or maybe that's because there's lots of oaks around here. And it's a parasite. It, um, it hurts the tree. 
So all the leaves are off the oak tree, and what do you see? Mistletoe. I had a little bit of red come out of that berry, so I put heavy green right there. Wait till you see how different the, um, the regular paper works rather than the shimmery white on the inside of the card. Works very different. Some ways it's, it's a bit brighter, it's not shimmery. Okay, half done. And if you want, here, let me show you. I'll do it on this one right here. So I'm giving this a squeeze because I want some water to come out. I want a whole drip of water to come out. Oh, that's green water. Okay, well, I'll move that about. We know water will evaporate. That's why we do the, um, the heat tool is to get the water to evaporate and just leave the ink. Okay, so you saw how I did that big drip of water right there. So now if you do this... Watch how the ink flows where the water is. And you can even tip it a little bit. I don't know if you could see that very good. I'll do it again. Well, the water really soaked into the paper. Okay, so I'm making sure you could see. If you give it a good squeeze of water, I'm going to have a green drip, I know. Oop, that's darker than I wanted. Let me get a lighter drip. Okay. I want you to see how the color flows through the drip. Where's a big one? I'll put it on this one. Give it a squeeze. Okay, so that's a light drip. Just water. Okay, but now watch this. Well, that didn't work out as good as I wanted it to. There it goes. You see how it kind of settles in the lower spots? Okay, that was the weirdest thing. The, the gizmo that I have in the corner, I don't want to say her name. She just told me what time it is. I don't think I asked her. I didn't ask her that. She's listening. Does yours ever do that? Okay, I'm, I'm playing around here rather than getting getting stuff done. So have you already sent out your holiday cards? I'm so behind on everything. I haven't yet. But we've already received three of them. I said to Tony, I said, those, those early achievers, they just want one of my homemade cards. That's what it is. Oh, went outside the line. Okay, I think I got all of it done. I like how this one is light at the bottom. So I'm just gonna let that sit and we can work on the rest of the card. And we still have more coloring to do on um, the inside, or not. There was that one, I just did the berries. Okay, so this will go off to the side for a minute. 
or two or three. These, I think they're dry. It's this, this one here. It needs a little bit of time. Okay, let's start with the card, the card itself. Usually we start there. Knight of Navy. I have a feeling this is gonna look really good, but I love Knight of Navy. Should we sneak, see how it's gonna look? and inside papers so looking at the samples I have two of them landscape one of them portrait okay portrait portrait it shall be this is for the words I could do that right now so the words are going to be in gold powder and um, may the miracle of this season bring peace Merry Christmas, Christmas blessings. What's left? May your heart be filled with joy of the season. That's nice. May your heart be filled. This one. And Versa Mark. Should do the buddy. I always forget to do my buddy. For some arc. I think I'm just going to cut this out um, like a rectangle. Then powder. I hope that shows up a little brighter. brightened up. <coughs> so Evan and Michaela are at a wedding. So we have, we have Little Man, we have Bruiser. He's a Boston. I'm going to make this smaller and I'm just going to make it a rectangle. I have a little paper cutter right here. Just a minute. So last night, that little dog didn't sleep well. So guess what? Neither did we. He was up like every two hours. I think he was thirsty. He went into the, the shower to get a drink. Finally he calmed down after we gave him a bowl of water, but oh it's hard to be a grandparent. Okay. So, next step is putting gold on here and then freckles. That's going to go there. Okay, so first mark. Big, big stamp. Right here at the bottom. I kind of like it there. I'll try this one opposite. Okay, and I have to put the powder on because I can't see a thing. You know, there's that song, Silver and Gold. My head is singing, Navy and Gold. I like it. It's pretty. So, just a little bit more. 
mistletoe. Should I try to do the dots? Just imagining where I did. Well, lots of dots are good. Okay, not, not too many. Okay, I think I'm getting too many. Okay, gold powder. Oh yeah, I got carried away with the dots. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll like it. not too bad. Oh, 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 you know what I want to do? Is just the Versamark. Now that all the powder is on, I'm going to just put this like random places and it's going to be like a, um, a different additional level of texture to the card. Okay, you probably can't see that, but in just a minute, usually Versamark, it makes your paper one shade darker if you just leave it like that. And I could kind of, let me see, can you see it? If not, when I take the picture, I'll, I'll make sure to show you. It's like if it's right in the right light, like right there. Okay. Oh yeah, this is pretty. Okay, how, how is this doing? Time. Look at that. See, that covers up a lot of the dots. I know, I, I kind of went crazy on there. So this one, this one here, trimmed it. It was almost painful, but I loved the look. So, that can be there. You have to have a plan. This can be... See, I'm not wanting to cut that off, but I think it will, it'll look, oh, and then leave room for the ribbon. Well, then I'm not going to be cutting anything off. Where's that other one? Okay. Or is that too rounded? Maybe it's too rounded. There, that's an extension. We all need extensions. Okay, where's those words? Those words can go, they have to go partially over the, the um, shimmery white colored paper so, because I think if it was down here, it would just be lost. But that does look good down there. Okay, I'm thinking it'll go right, maybe right about, I don't know, right there? Okay, the bow with the gold. I should have opened this first. A double bow. And if ever, if you are like, how'd you do that double bow? I have a little video on it. Let me know and I'll send you the link. People all the time ask, how do you do that? It's like, I have a video. And then they ask about the, um, the magic dimensionals. I love my magic dimensionals. Okay, a little double bow. Guess who's been crafting all day? Okay, if you do a little double bow, get stuck on your fingers.
and it makes your fingers turn blue. But it's going to be little and cute. Okay, so that could go here. Okay, so everything needs to shift down. Well, this one, because the words are there, this could be coming from there. Okay. And then that one could be, okay, that's looking good. Now, can I remember it? I'll just kind of get it part in place. want to mess it up. Isn't it a shame to cover up the bow? The bow is pretty. The bow, the bow is staying. But to mess up the, um, or cover up the colored berries. Okay, so that will stay like that. This can have a big dimensional See, I could use an extra, extra few fingers. Okay, so now I know where it goes. <coughs> so this goes on with, I had some kit and I had these glue dots. I need to use them. Okay, so now I'll really stick it down. The words need glue. Get them straight. I think mini dimensional on that corner. It's saying, hello, I'm here. Okay, and This way I don't have to count them. This way I don't feel guilty for putting on too many. Lori Hancock. She always gives me grief. You don't need that many dimensionals. But I like it. I want it to stay in place. So since these are half size, that means I get double the allotment, right? So instead of putting four on in each corner, I could put eight on. Okay. Looking good. Okay, I'll trim up my ribbon. Isn't this pretty? I like navy though. Mm, my bow, you know how I always put glue, just locked in place. So bow and bruiser have been playing all day today. And right now, because Tony isn't here, they are snoozing. He had them outside all day today. Okay, that's looking pretty. So... I need to trim these little bits. So to do that, flip this over and give it a trim. I don't want to disturb that bow. Oh, speaking of bow, yesterday he got a bath. Remember how he was skunked a few weeks ago? Most of the skunk most of it is gone. He still has a little bit. 
and his toenails are cut so much that he's almost like a silent dog. Can't hear him, and he's just there. Okay. So, how about if we work on the inside? I'm just gonna let that glue sit. Oh, but, but I know, I know you wanna know. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Okay, so for the inside, I think I'm going to do it. How, how is this one? Oh, that's pretty, though. And look how the words are off to the side. Okay, just like that. But this one, I'll put mistletoe here and the words over there. I think the words need to be Merry Christmas. Those are kind of big, though. Well, they could go down lower. I'm working in a few inches of space again. It just happens. Okay, so this is going to be... You know what? I'm going to do it on this side. No, I like, I like that. That's good. See, I'm not sure that I left enough room for Merry Christmas. Can't see it. <coughs> now I can see it. Okay, Merry Christmas. Mm. Okay, I'm going to be kind of artsy-fartsy. And just pretend like I planned it like that. Right there. Okay, can't see it. I was going to put dots on. Hold on. That looks good. So if you're like, okay, before you heat it, just put your dots on. But I'd recommend, whenever you're doing this, heat it. Because if you get this powder all jammed up in your pad, your pad doesn't work anymore. So let's heat this and then we'll put the dots on. And if your heat tool is warmed up, it goes really fast. Okay, so I've got this big old area here. So how about like that? And then a little bit over here. Just a little bit. Okay, so now it's time to watercolor, and you're going to see what a difference watercoloring on regular paper versus watercoloring on shimmery paper. Here's my little colors. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's the one that's out. There, that one's full. Hmm, I don't know if this is the same one. 
That one has more water coming out. I'll give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to do the three berries, wash, then Merlot Light. See how it just drinks it up and then you can't move it? Merlot Dark. Then red. This tip of this pen, I don't think this is the one I was using before. It's not my favorite. Okay, so you can see the different colors in there. But just see how the um, paper just drinks up the, um, the color in the water. There's no leeway with that. So I think... I think this is not my favorite one. Ooh. Maybe this is, oh, that looks better. Okay, let's do it again. So, wash. We'll go into the lighter. Bit of color for the whole thing. See how it took the color right where I dropped down on it? Darker down here. And if you um, color too long on your paper, you know how your sweater, how you it pels underneath your um, your forearm, it will kind of ball up. So just just be careful. Then I want the bright red at the top. Those look good. Okay. And you don't have much time either compared to shimmery white because it dries. It's like the paper drinks it, drinks the pigment. Ooh, that's dark. Okay. And then the brighter color. And if it isn't perfect, you know, it's okay. You could tell them, yes, I, I watercolored that. I did it. Oop, that's a leaf. Oop, it's a pink leaf now. Okay, that's a new berry. I colored it pink. <gasps> this one is going to be a nice dark berry. Don't tell anyone it's a leaf. And real red. Okay, berries are done. No waiting required. We can move right on to the green. The green is just olive. Making sure all the red is out of there. Okay, just did those. Let's start up here. A little bit of a wash just on the stems. Green. And sometimes it's kind of nice that there's like different tones to the green. Okay, how about this leaf? I think I'm running out of green. So if ever you do that and you got a big old blob of it, I'm just going to make this part up here a little bit darker and pretend like I planned that. Look, I need to get more green. See, that one is not colored perfectly, but it looks good within all that. So I could put another drip, but let me see how much I have in here. That's plenty. So how about this leaf? The wash and a little bit of color. Okay, a lot of bit of color. Okay, and because I know that there's quite a bit on here. Well, I thought there was. And it's going to dry lighter and smoother than 
right at first when it's still wet. A little bit of a wash of color, and I'll make the top part darker. And when you look at each one of these, they're all different, but that's okay. So don't be too hard on yourself when you're coloring it. If you're like, but that one's lighter and that one's darker, keep in mind when it dries, it's going to look smoother in color and that's what makes it artsy and unique I want to do that light up right there but when I get some of the color off on this leaf now I'll go back and make it lighter boy I hope that some art major who knows exactly how to watercolor isn't watching this. They go, you're doing that wrong. Ooh, really dark. Really dark. I like the stem dark. <laughs> okay, when you see pictures of this, if you like it, you can remember when I'm making it, I'm thinking it's a little, a little crazy. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, be a little right through here. Okay, clean out your brush tip because if you go to do a different one, you don't want green going into your red. Okay, done with that. I think it's just time to assemble. I'm hoping that when I put this on the soft suede mat and then on the navy Let's see it's already looking good watercoloring on very vanilla and Watercoloring on shimmery white. We should have tried the um, the watercolor paper because that acts completely different than these two do. I think I think the easiest is the shimmery white because it's forgivable. You could just keep moving the color around. The watercolor paper and the plain cardstock, they just drink it up. Okay, that does look good. Now that it's all matted. Okay, and this goes on with dimensionals. The glue started to dry. Oh, I might have to use them all. It would be funny if I left one. No, I'll do them all. Okay, this one might be my favorite. 
Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay. There it is. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you can, give me a thumbs up. Bye.